Engineers of Reddit, what's the most ridiculous idiot proofing you've had to add in your never ending quest to combat stupid people? A paragraph in an owner's manual on not eating the broken glass from binoculars. But it pairs so well with paint chips. Chemical Engineer, please do not shit in the test room. I wish I was joking, but it happened. My cousin is a chemical engineer. For weeks they had contaminants in their product. I forget exactly what fixes they tried, but they eventually found out via security cams that one of the night shift maintenance workers was pissing into one of the chemical vats. We had a pedestrian bridge next to a bridge for vehicles, separated by about a three-foot gap. The bridges were about twenty feet high over the water. So many drunk pedestrians climbed over the rails and tried to jump between bridges and didn't make it that I was directed to design a safety net to hang between the two bridges. Wife is a civil engineer. The one that came to mind for her was that she had to add to the specification of a construction contract that stated that workers would not drink the water that accumulated at the bottom of an excavation. I work on cars, so almost everything is designed around protecting people. My favorite is that we have to make the HVAC system louder and engine noise insulation worse because people will complain if they can't hear the systems running. We could make almost silent air ducts, but our warranty spend would go up. Not only that, but the quieter you make one thing, the more noticeable and annoying other far more difficult to suppress squeaks and rattles become. There's amazing amounts of soundproofing and rattle prevention built into modern cars. It's the same issue as when they banned smoking in UK pubs. Without the smoke smell to mask it, everybody realized pubs actually smell of sweaty people, stale beer and piss. Not good. I work in facilities maintenance. Someone put in a ticket for a malfunctioned computer on wheels and I found the power cord was frayed. Not my gear so all I can really do is set it aside and have the biomed techs fix it. I put a zip tie through the holes in the prongs of the plug, put two nitro glove on the plug, Zip tied the gloves in place, and wrapped up the gloves with duct tape. I got a sheet of printer paper and wrote, Inoperative. Do not use. Do not plug in. And taped it to the monitor. Couple hours later I get a ticket for another cow with frayed power cord sparking. It turned out to be the same cart, and one of the nurses cut the end of the gloves off, cut the zip tie in the end of the plug, and plugged it in and it arced and tripped a breaker because of the frayed power cord. Cut the plug off. No doubt it needs fixing and can't be used unless the plug is replaced. The idiots will jam the wires directly into the outlet. Took the physical disable Wi-Fi button off laptops. Clearly marked, but people would still flip it and wonder why their Wi-Fi went off. I used superglue to jam one user's switch in the on position since he could not follow instructions regarding not touching the switch. He complained that he could no longer turn Wi-Fi off to my boss. Boss came to me and said why. I showed him the two or three tickets a week for Wi-Fi not connecting from that one user. Boss noticed all the other similar tickets and said, Super glue all of them. That guy sounds like a jackass. If he complained that he couldn't then he should have clearly known about the switch. Yeah, he was a jackass. That company had a policy for who got which kind of laptops. Devs ID top end, sales small and light, project managers mid-range, Everyone else low-end if you could get one at all since it required special approval. A couple of weeks after supergluing all of those switches I realized that Jackass was really trying to get an upgrade from PM to Dev IT laptop or at least a new PM laptop and was submitting tickets just to show that his was broken and he needed a new one. He started submitting other tickets about slow crashing etc. His was like 3 years old and he was annoyed that new PMs had better PM laptops. Not to say that the Wi-Fi switch wasn't a problem. People were accidentally flipping it at times, but this jackass was doing it intentionally. I'm a mechy intern. I walked in on my manager discussing a design with another engineer. All I heard was, So the guys will probably use that as a hammer so I made it out of this stronger material. When they're working they will probably be throwing this small door open so I used stronger hinges and added a stop. It's things like this that I really appreciate about my internship. I likely wouldn't have thought about that myself. When I worked in a shop, the screwdriver that everyone considered the good screwdriver was the one that also doubled best as a hammer. When your only problem is a nail, all your tools look like hammers. Civil engineer here. 
while laying asphalt usually we close the road and cover using barricade tapes. But no matter his hard we try people always find ways to go through and ruin the whole process. Ultimately we had to use security to block the roads. Worked in retail and when the store was closing we'd put the shutter 3-4 down to stop people coming in and stand by it, raising it as the last customers left. So many times I had to stop people almost laying on the floor and trying to come in under it. Some seemed genuinely surprised annoyed that the store was closing. Former combat engineer here. We built a three feet high fence across a minefield including huge red warning triangles every four feet someone still stepped over it to go take a crap in the woods. They were carried out on a stretcher. Nothing is idiot proof. The guys carrying the stretcher were probably shitting themselves too. Dude was infantry. We had to minesweep our way in with detectors. Luckily he only stepped on a toe popper and only lost one two of one foot. The medics were trained for that kind of stuff. Didn't even realize they make mines just to maim people and not kill them. Kill an enemy and you're down one enemy. Maim him and you now have two plus people not fighting while they help. I worked in a call center and all of the PCs were slung on straps under the desks. I'd love to know which genius came up with that idea. So, people would be on the phone swinging back and forth in their chair and hit the power button. Then I'd get a ticket saying, my modem keeps turning off. I disabled the power button from immediately shutting down the PC if you pressed it but of course they'd get into a position sometimes where it'd be held down long enough to override it. Solution? Duct tape and a bottle cap. Once we upgraded all the PCs to new ones I took the time to remove those stupid straps and put the PCs behind the monitor out of reach instead. I have one customer that takes our product, removes the battery packs, and solders them in backwards. He cuts the wires to the batteries, then solders red to black, and black to red. Then calls us complaining that they don't work. There is no idiot proofing that I can think of at this point. I pretty much just admit defeat now. That doesn't even sound like someone making a stupid but innocent mistake. That sounds very deliberate. The most dangerous people are the ones that believe they are geniuses. Application engineer here. When handling a 3D laser scanner, it has to be placed and fixed on a stable tripod. A flat rail of a balcony is not a suitable substitute for it. And no, the insurance has not covered the total loss of the device after it fell from the fifth floor to the concrete pavement. It surprised me how careless people can be with laser scanners. An old college of mine had set one up on a high tripod during a very windy day and walked away to do something, can't remember what. He said he realized he fucked up when he heard the smash behind him. I work for the utility company, mainly in the distribution of natural gas. All of the pipelines we put into the ground are either yellow or black and yellow, and only gas is allowed to use yellow for their pipes. Some of them have natural gas printed on them in big bold letters. We put special tape about 20 centimeters above the pipeline to indicate that there is a gas pipeline below, and whomever is digging there should be careful. All these precautions and warnings, and we still get daily incidents from idiots who were digging somewhere and hit a gas pipeline. Also work for a similar company. Worst is when an idiot doesn't call dig safe, their backhoe damages the pipe, and they just cover it up. Then we get a call for an emergency leak, dig down, and you can clearly see what happened. Backhoe teeth marks and all. This is why everyone should take a length of fiber optic cable with them when they go hiking camping somewhere remote. Lost? Put the cable on the ground and someone with a backhoe will be there within an hour to cut it. Reminds me of one of my first design jobs. Okay boss, I've got the design. The front footing needs to be 20 inches wide. The rear footing is 17 inches wide. So both of them are 20 inches. Why do we need a 20 inch if a 17 inch will work? Because that way we don't have to worry about the construction guys building a 17 inch front footing and a 20 inch rear footing. I work remodeling small businesses. Our niche is we keep the business running while doing the remodel. I've caught people climbing over fences, ducking under moving heavy machinery, broke into locked doors all to act surprised when we tell them this area is off limits and point to one of the 10 signs we posted. I clean up crime scenes. I've had people duck under police tape lines, open the zipper on poly sheeting containment, walk through blood and brain spatter, and walk up to a tech wearing a Tyvek suit, gloves, rubber boots, and a full-face cartridge respirator to see what's going on. 
Years ago I worked as a building engineer, glorified maintenance man, for an office building that had endless complaints about the AC heater not working. The staff in the office would adjust the thermostat up and down all day, and then everyone else would complain it was too hot or too cold. It did not matter what kind of lock or cage I put on it, they would break and remove within a day or two of a new one being installed. So I got a new thermostat with a remote sensor and installed it in my office with the remote sensor near where the old T-stat was, and I left the old T-stat in place with low voltage power so that it would appear to function. Then I let them change the temp on the old T-stat all they wanted while I programmed the real one in my office to our building standards. Poof, just like that the complaints were reduced by 90%. I was always pretty sure most office thermostats were placebo, thermostats that didn't do anything. This was while I was in school for electrical engineering. The prof looked at us one day and said, You can't make something 100% idiot proof because the universe will just make a better idiot at the challenge. That has stuck with me since. Do you have a similar story? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.